guys, my name is Stephanie Tienko. I have a port wine stain or what you would call Sturge Weber syndrome or just a birthmark. A port wine stain is a vascular lesion that covers uh, the surface of your skin. What happens is it's actually a mutated gene where in these little patches of your skin, there's a switch that's flipped on at all times where it's telling that little patch of skin, bleed, 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 fill, 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 grow, grow, grow. So it's constantly filling with blood, essentially. But they're tiny little veins and tissue with a ton of capillaries where they're always filling. And when you touch it, it kind of disappears because it's just blood. So in in essence, it's just um, it's just a little patch or a little fluid filled little sack inside your skin that's causing all of this. Now, what people like me do is that we will go and get laser treatments, uh, preferably with the pulse dye laser, which targets red pigmentation. It will go straight through the skin, target just that pigment and essentially damage that tissue. And what happens is it causes almost an underneath, uh, under dermal skin gab that your skin, your body will then uh, reabsorb. Now, it doesn't mean that your body's not going to regenerate that area that has color, but for the most part, you have areas that never recover and stay gone, essentially. So um, I, it's been since 2014 since I've had my last laser treatment. And basically, I've been doing these laser treatments since I was six years old at the Beckman Laser Institute in California with Dr. Nelson and um, a couple times with Dr. Jill Weibel in Miami. Um, in my specific uh, severity of my um, birthmark, it's not on the full end of the scale where Sturge Weber and it's um, in, in interfering with uh, my mental faculties or or organs per se, um, not at least all the time, uh, but it definitely needs maintenance because these tissues and these veins can um, complicate nerves, your eye. I'm at risk of uh, going blind or getting um, glaucoma because of the pressure behind the eye, especially this one. If you can see the lesion on this side is much more pigmented and fuller than on this side of my face. And you can see how the skin on this side is a little bit thicker. And then if I show you, even in my eyes, I have the veins because this birthmark doesn't just live on the skin of your surface. It can live inside of you. So I have it in my lips, my gums, inside my ears and my nose. Um, it, there's veins inside my eyes and my body. Um, I also have it on my back all the way down my legs. Uh, so it's just a really interesting kind of a uh, gene mutation that I live with. And um, I think it's great. It's just uh, every day, you know, we, I, uh, it it's causes me to be self-conscious sometimes with my friends and family who are close to me. I'm totally fine. But when I walk around in the grocery store and somebody asks me um, if I'm okay or if, the fire hurt me, assuming that I'm a burn victim. It's always an awkward conversation that I don't necessarily go home and cry, but you definitely don't want to share these, this information with just anybody or strangers or have those conversations with strangers. Sometimes you just want a grocery shop. So um, today I'm going to show you guys how I cover my port wine stain uh, with daily makeup. Uh, I don't think that you have to cover your birthmark at all. Um, I just do it on occasion because sometimes it becomes a distraction when I'm trying to communicate with people. So I like to, um, if I'm going for a meeting or a job or if I'm meeting new people, I'll usually put on makeup. If I'm around friends and family, I usually don't. Or if I'm not going to interact with somebody, say we go into um, Disney or a grocery store and I'm just not going to interact with people, I will not wear makeup because um, there's it's not going to be hindering me communicating with anybody. They're not going to be wondering or questioning or making me feel uncomfortable. So if I'm not communicating with somebody for the day, I pretty much won't put on makeup. It's strictly only if I'm having like a personal interaction with someone where it'll make me feel more comfortable and I think it makes them, some people feel more comfortable. So I'm gonna show you my favorite things that I use. Now, the first thing that I do um, 
with our condition, if you guys also, anybody watching this has Sturge Weber or Port Weinstein, um, there's a lot of things that have to do with swelling and um, inflammation. So when I wake up in the morning, this side of my face is much more swollen than this side of my face. And probably because this has more vascular uh, density than this side has. So the first thing I do is I wanna calm it down. Sometimes I put an ice pack on my face, um, but before makeup, the first thing I'm gonna do is put on a toner. And in the morning, uh, what I do is I just wash my face really gently with water. I don't even use soap. In the morning, I save that for at night and a washcloth. I always use a washcloth. And then um, today I'm going to use this Shiseido um, like toner. It's something that's very calming. There's also an, uh, many different types of this. There's one by Lancome. There's um, another one by Shiseido. There's stuff by Origins that I use. But in essence, it, it, it just is, um, you know, a little infusing concentrate. It's a soft toner. So we're going to do that first. A little tiny bit, not too much, because we have a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> so I want to make sure that my skin feels dewy. I might have a different skin tone than you do. Mine is combination. Um, I have Asian skin, so I really like to have it moist and dewy all the time. If you guys have dry skin or um, a different texture, you know, I highly recommend you keeping it as moist as possible, but not in a place where if you touch it, it feels wet. It should just feel nice and soft, like as if you just um, towel dried your face. It should feel just a little moist. So. This is a standby that I use. Um, I've used it since I was in fourth grade. Uh, I've tried many, many, many other things. I've used the Elizabeth Arden Longwear. I've used NARS. I've used Clinique. I've used uh, um, uh, Makeup Forever. I've used uh, Derma Blend. I've used, I mean, tons. Airbrush. There was an airbrush makeup that almost tattooed your face for a while. All of these things are great. And some of them I actually use on occasion. But by far, Revlon Colors Day. It stays on forever. It's extremely hard to get off, but um, you can sweat in it, you can swim in it. And as long as you're blotting your face when you sweat or get water on it and you're not wiping, it's gonna stay in place, which for somebody like me is very much appreciated. So I don't like to use a makeup brush because my skin is very sensitive and makeup brushes tend to get a lot of debris stuck in them. So when I'm putting on foundation, I like to use my hand. I think it warms the product and it helps it spread on your skin really, really well. So I do a little bit of this. Now this foundation is really tricky because you have to get it on and you have to get it right the first time or you're gonna wash your face and have to start all over. Now for somebody like me, I can't just cover just the area because it will look as though I'm blotchy because there's so much uh, foundation that's there. It can look really cakey if you don't spread it really evenly. Essentially what you're trying to do is get a nice even layer of this stuff all over your face and under your chin and I'll show you how to blend my neck afterward. So I spread it with my fingers. See this area right here has a lot of pigment for me so I want to make sure to get as much of that there as possible. And also up here, because we wear sunglasses and you're sneezing, you just wanna make sure that it's even. See, and one of the things that's a big issue for me is that this little area right here tends to be a little softer and hold on to product a little more. So you gotta be gentle. You don't wanna be causing yourself wrinkles or, or ramming it into your eye sockets. You know, you, you wanna be a little gentle. But this way with my fingers versus a beauty blender or a foundation brush, I can get all these little tiny crevices without hurting the inside of my eye. I can spread it evenly. I feel like I have more control. Now I have to spread it a little bit into my hairline because as you can see like right here, see it? That's birthmark that's almost never been treated. 
it's really dark. It ends up looking like it's my hairline, but it's birthmark under there that's causing that. It's not actually hair. It's so dark that it's like a brown, purpley, maroony color because it's never actually had the laser on it. So as you can see, I have it spread pretty evenly on my face. This eye is a little more puffy than the other one. I'm always having to be careful and retouch this one. And then you just want to make sure you get this part of your face because you don't want to be you don't have lines or or little ledges where the pigment falls off and you just have this line of color and then your neck's a different color. So I like to blend it down. I don't like to apply it to my whole neck. I just want to blend it so it's a little less pigment as you go down the neck. Um, when you're wearing a white shirt or a turtleneck, it's a nightmare, but you can do it. You just put, I'll, I'll show you that in another video. I'm going to wash my hand. One of the downsides of, um, having to apply this much base, especially a base that's this strong and sticks to you, is you need a sink or it's not coming off and you're gonna have a weird goopy hand all day. So sometimes you can get it off with makeup wipes, but makeup wipes are also a problem because they have makeup removers in them and emollients. So if you were to be in a car and let's say you're trying to put this makeup on in a car and you use a wipe, your hand's gonna have all that makeup remover on it and then your next phase, like when you put the powder on and everything to set this, your fingers are gonna have that makeup remover in it and it could move your base. So you gotta be really careful with that. All right, let's move on. You can see that the base is a little lighter than my skin. I look very pale. There's a reason it's because we're about to layer uh, different um, powders and, and bronzers and blushes and creams on top of my face to make it look more dewy and natural. And if we don't start with something that's lighter, you're gonna end up looking like you went to a tanning bed and only tanned your face. You need to start lighter. And remember that your foundation, your powders, everything oxidizes like a penny. So when you leave your house, it's gonna be at least another shade and a half to two shades darker as the day progresses. So I have just bought this. I'm trying this out. This is um, the Kat Von D. It's the powder foundation. My go-to normally is the uh, MAC uh, Studio Fix. I've used this since I was in fourth grade. It's wonderful. It's a, a pressed powder foundation almost. Lots of coverage with this. I can't use a regular pressed powder. I have to use a full coverage powder um, because even a full coverage foundation will not cover my birthmark. Yours might be different, it might be lighter, but mine's pretty dark, so I have to use a full coverage powder. So I'm gonna show you this. This is actually a little darker than I would like, but when you put it on, it has tons of pigment. And one of the things you want inside of your foundations and your powder is pigment. I used to think the opposite. I was really for the whole like, your face oxidizes and you know, you wanna stay lighter. Yes, you want your base to stay lighter, but you need things with pigment in them because it's not gonna cover it if there's not a pigment. So because my birthmark has so much color in it, I need to put things on my face that have color to cover this. And we gotta put it on in a really artistic stick way so it looks natural. So you're going to freak out when you see this because it freaked me out. This is the Kat Von D. Let me just show you. It's quite dark and has a lot of color in it, as you can see. And look, this is just powder. So if any of you girls out there don't have a birthmark, I mean, look at this. It, it, the craziness between these two is nuts because my foundation is way too light, right? And this powder is way too dark, I think. It's like two shades too dark. I'm gonna exchange this actually sooner, but I found a workaround on how to get this to look the pigment that I need. But as you can see, Look at how even it makes this side of my face look because it has that much pigment in it. I mean, it's incredible. I really like this formulation. It's very hard for me to find new products that I like um, because of the heavy coverage that my face requires. So 
this was a pleasant surprise of how well it covered. Now, the color is not my favorite, but I know that it's in the realm of possibilities for future things that I could buy um, for makeup for coverage. It also feels good. It doesn't feel chalky. And do you see, that's another thing I want to show you. I don't wipe. Um, I blot. Uh, when I'm putting on my powder. And the reason why is you don't want to move your base. If you move your base, you're going to have these weird cakey ledges of uh, foundation where they pile up. You want to like pat it on and then kind of spread it because it's the way you're going to get the most even uh, coverage. Otherwise, it just looks very cakey. Now, look at this. This is crazy, right? Uh... So I'm going to do the other side of my face. This little guy is an eczema patch that seems to not want to go away. This also will work for um, covering uh, rosacea, acne pigmentation, just redness in general. These techniques are gonna work for just, this is just a full coverage technique. The blotting, the blending, using your fingers for the foundation. It's all just a way to keep your coverage in place and looking as even as possible. And you know, it's never gonna be perfect because our faces aren't perfect, but that's okay. So here's that. I think way too dark. One of the things that I like to do after I get my powder on is I always have a wet washcloth nearby. This one's freezing cold, but it's wrung out very, very well. And the reason why is because I want my face to look as natural as possible at all times. I never want it to look chalky. So I take this opportunity to just blot my face with a little bit of the moisture that's in this. It really takes off the excess powder it sets the makeup a little better for the next layer. It absorbs the moisture. And look, it didn't remove anything. The blotting keeps everything in place, but now my face feels nice and fresh. It doesn't feel um, like I have cake on my face. So now I'm going to take my Standby Studio Fix and correct this orangeness. I normally don't do this. I don't use two different powders, but this one's way too dark for me to be comfortable with. So same thing. See, I've just kind of evened out a little bit of the color. And I get back to more of a tone that looks more natural to my skin. But the great thing is that I still got to use that pigment to cover up my pigment underneath, which is what you need. You ever notice like when you go and you have a white wall and it has red or black marks all over it, the minute you take some white paint and paint over it, it's not going to cover it. You're going to need coat after coat after coat. But if you were to pick a color to paint over that, it would probably cover it in the first uh, swipe of the brush. So that's kind of the same concept when you're covering up a pigmented uh, birthmark. I feel like that painter guy with the fun afro talking to you about how to apply base and blend. I'm going to apply that here now. As you can see, I'm, I'm doing the pat all the way around. This is also so I don't move my base or create that weird scratchy sensation. Oh, I get chills. When you rub that sponge powder applicator on your face, it gives you that like scratchy thing of it ramming into your pores. I don't like that. Again, I blot. And here's the base. Now, the interesting thing that I found over the years is that if you don't complete your makeup at this point, now that you have the base on, within the next, like, if you don't start doing your application of your eyeshadows and all that stuff on your eyes in the next couple minutes, it won't lay the same. It won't stay the same. Your body starts 
almost metabolizing the foundation that you just put on. And so the way that it sets on your face will always be different if you don't do it directly after each other. It's going to feel weird. My eyeshadow will move. My eyes will look tired. It's very strange. So the first thing that I do is that because I have so much base on and powder, I have tons and tons of uh, foundation over my eyebrows and around my lips, which is not where I want it. And um, if I was to apply color to my eyebrows right now and pencil them in, I would have this powdery kind of vibe over my eyes where it looks like I'm wearing a whole lot of makeup. So what I do is I take just any type of little moisturizer. It could be anything. It could be body lotion, whatever you want. I take a little Q-tip. I spin it, right? because you don't want a big blob. You spin it right on your hand, all the excess. And then now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and you're gonna go over your eyebrow to get all that extra powder off. I do this because you don't want people to look at you and be able to tell how much makeup you have on. And this is one thing that I know tons of makeup artists and people don't, they miss this, they miss this. They leave all that powdery crap on the eyebrow and it looks awful. This is a way to remove all that so then when you do your eyebrows, they look as natural as possible and as well, your makeup will too. So we're gonna do this. We're just taking off all that extra little powder. Since I don't have really long lashes, I don't have to worry about doing this to my lashes, but um, when I'm doing somebody else's makeup, I just do this really quick, just like that, right? And then I'm gonna take this to the side in case I have any blemishes for later. And you just take that lotion, rub it into your hands, all the excess. So now I'm ready for, um, oh, and then you do it around your lips, sorry. funny thing. I'm not wearing any color on my lips. This is my birthmark. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, my lips have gotten bigger because the tissue thickens and it gets bigger and thicker. So they are a little more uneven than they used to be, but they're bigger and they're darker than when I was little because a lot of my treatments, none of the doctors went over my lips because it's very painful to have uh, laser surgery on your, on your lips. Okay. Now I'm ready to do my eyes. For me, I'm Asian. I have a slightly hooded eye on this side and like mm, maybe a minuscule one on this side. I really wanna brighten this up, okay? So there's a lot of different techniques that people use for eyeshadows. Um, I like to skip, stick to things that are as natural as possible for obvious reasons, because I'm wearing a lot of makeup and I don't need to look or feel as made up as that all the time. So. Um, I use my fingers to apply uh, um, eyeshadow for the same reason. It warms up the product, it spreads better, and it sticks to your eye, and a little bit of your oils get into the product, and I think that's great. My hands are extremely clean anytime I put on makeup. That's also something. You need to have very clean hands. You do not belong touching any of your makeup if you haven't thoroughly scrubbed your hands before you started. Okay, so here is my light color base I'm going to spread on my eyelids. I'm gonna get in that corner. I'm gonna spread it all the way to the top. I start on my eyelid because that's where the most of the pigmentation I want. And I don't mind that little bit here because it kind of lightens it up for me. Um, depending on the shape of your face, you might not wanna do that. You might wanna do something else. But for me, doing this light base all over brightens the eye and then you can color and artistically do your eye makeup however you want but you start with this nice it doesn't have to be shimmery or anything like that but there's always it's not flat because the flat always it looks chalky so I want a little bit of that sparkle in there it's just really tiny here we go So now um, I have my eyeshadow on. I have my um, base on. I've cleaned off all my lashes. Now I'm going to use bronzer. So my bronzer that I've used for years and I've tried to use other ones. I've used Becca. I've used Hourglass. I've used Fenty. I've used um, Kat Von D's. I've used Max. I've used like literally probably everything that you can find in your local Sephora. I have tried. Um, 
but the best one is Guerlain. Guerlain is the best bronzer you can ever get. It lasts forever. It never cracks. I think this might be three years old. I'm serious. Um, and it hasn't broken yet. And I've dropped it many, many times. This is an 05 bronzer. It's the terracotta. The terracotta is what you want to go for, but there's different levels of um, pigment inside of it. So this is m very dark, actually. But I'm going to take it because I don't need this flat face. I don't need a one. Nobody has a one colored face. I'm not doing this for contouring. I'm doing this to make it look as natural as possible, even though I'm wearing so much makeup. I don't, I'm not trying to contour or do anything but cover the birthmark. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to apply it right in this area. I kind of come up like this. I'm going to come down here. I like a very wide um, bronzer brush. This is just a Sephora kit brush. Let me show you another one that I have. This is a True Coat. This one I've had forever. This nice big wide flat brush is a fantastic uh, bronzer brush, but this one this one's great too. It can't be too big because you need it to have a little bit of control over what's happening. So you're gonna do this right, right in this area but you also have to get up here. Now, a lot of you might be watching this and being like, oh my goodness, she's got a lot of color, a lot of stuff on her face. Yeah, because I've been doing this since I was 14 and if you don't, you're not gonna cover the birthmark or the scar or anything else. So if you guys see this, this is called a bleb for people who have Sturge Weber or um, Port Wine Stains. As you get older and they keep growing, you can get these little eruptions and actually what this is is a little bleb and it's filled with blood. So I had one here before and they had to cut it off because it kept bleeding, but look, huge scar from it. It was, it's awful. Hopefully one day I'll be able to get this removed and it won't grow. Um, because of our vascular lesions, we're very, very prone to keloiding in the areas where we have these lesions because we have extra blood supply, which supplies the tissue that's trying to grow there. Okay. So now that I have my bronzer on, I have it in my hairline, I have it just right here and a little bit on my neck, I'm going to do a blush. So everybody's cheeks are just a little rosy because that's where all the veins go and so that's where you flush. So you need to put a little blush on to look natural. Back in the day when I was in high school, you, I have pictures of me where I was afraid to use blush because of my birthmark. I didn't want to add more pink to my face. So I would just put my foundation and powder on and cover it. <clears throat> and I was afraid of blush and bronzer or anything else. I didn't want to add on top. Like I thought it was going to make it stand out more. And I have pictures in high school where I just look like a goth because I'm just completely white faced. It's crazy. Maybe a geisha. <laughs> So I just spread this a little bit and I want to come up to my eye a little bit because I'm going to connect that. I have this nice healthy glow. I'm going to go like this just a little bit because my birthmark does not exist in the middle, if you guys remember. So I'm going to add a little more pink here to even that out. It's funny. It's the reverse of what high school me would have done. So now I have my blush. Now... My face, I don't want it to look chalky. That's why I do the blotting every once in a while like this, you know, add some moisture. But I really found that I love cream blush. Sephora used to have this spray blush, like an airbrush blush, but it was in a can and you could spray it on your cheeks and it gave you this glow, it was beautiful. Um, Guerlain has a spray bronzer, but it's very expensive. It's like $75 a bottle or something like that. Um, Mac and Bobbi Brown have these wonderful little paint pots of uh, cream blush. So you can use this on your lips or your cheeks. I just use this on my cheeks. And remember, the basic thing we want to do is not move our everything we just built right here. So most people who don't have birthmarks or anything like that, they're going to put this on, they're going to rub it, they're going to blend it like that. 
with a beauty blender or with a brush. I can't do that because there's emollients in here. If I do that, it's going to make a huge hole in this thick layer of foundation that I now have on my face, okay? So what I have to do is blot. You pick your little area. I do it right on my cheekbone. Take your finger and you just blot a little bit of this pigment in. And it gives it a little bit of a sh like a wetness, which I think looks more natural than just the powder. So now that the base is on my face, I'm going to point out something that my birthmark is doing as I age. So this tissue here on this side of my face is thickening and um, hopefully a laser treatment is going to make that go away because um, as it thickens you are at higher risk of blebs and bleeding and they're not just like little moles they bleed a lot this had to get be cut and cauterized because it was like an abyss to my body's blood supply it just didn't stop bleeding and it would if I just brushed it it would open up and bleed and it would look it looked like I got shot in the face um they had to carterize it um in order for it to stop and that's probably why it it closed like this um this one I've had for a while but you know if you let these your birthmark grow like this if you have one that's a same kind of line that mine is or severe more severe than mine your risk of getting these blebs and these bleeds and uh tissue damage and nerve damage the way that i am i'm not a very very severe case but i'm more severe than some but i'm not as severe as others but um for people who have this severity or more i would recommend doing and maintaining with pulse dye laser treatments because they it can cause a lot of problems later. Okay, so here's my birthmark, totally covered. You can see how the application of the dewy blush has made it look uh, more natural because now I have like this breathable area where I have shine and different colors happening on my face, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color, uh, put the eyeshadow on my eye. Nobody's eye is one color. It's just not gonna happen. For me, funny enough, I like mauves and pinks for my second color on my eyeshadow. I want to make it look as fresh and as natural as possible. I use my finger again. I, I use brushes, but I'm going to do this entire session with as many uh, application with my hands as possible because I really love using hands when applying makeup. Everything just goes on better. Now this, your eyes... It's a different type of skin, so you can rub like this. And for some reason, it doesn't come off of mine, uh, the makeup or the base, but maybe for you guys it'll be different. But for me, I can do this and it doesn't move the base. I think it's because your eyes are just a little bit drier. So see how I'm attaching that little bit of red is gonna come down to where I spread the blush up. I'm just gonna connect it, you know? This gives a nice little fresh look. It's actually almost a Korean makeup technique. They like to do that, um, where they put the red on the outside to make you look young and flushed. Whatever. Um, okay, so I have those two colors on. Basically, at this point, I'm pretty done here. If I had to leave, I could just do my eyebrows, put some mascara on, and leave. Um, I have to wear mascara. Our, eye our eyelashes are totally full of powder. You can't leave the house without doing something to them. You're going to need to darken them. You can't use the clear uh, mascara. You have to use something with pigment because you have a ton of base all over your lashes, especially if, if you have longer lashes than I do. Right now, one of my favorite mascaras is this NARS uh, Climax. So uh, I don't like mascaras that make your eyelashes crunchy. I have very little eyelashes. I'm very protective of them. So I don't need them cracking or falling off. And I find that the ones that make your eyelashes stiff and crunchy tend to do that to my eyelashes. They make them fall out. They make them break. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep my eyelashes soft. I want them feeling natural. And this specific one I really like. Um, there's also 
The Milk is very good. There's also a Clinique one that's very good. Um, the East St. Laurent one is very good. All of these are ones that keep your lashes really soft. Now, some of you have issues where your mascara is always smudgy and runs, and maybe for you, something like the Lancome Defensals, which gets dry, um, is good for you, because I have friends who can't wear this because it smears all over their face. For me, I have Asian lashes. I have barely any lashes. I barely get smudges, okay? Now, if you're applying this makeup, all this makeup that I have on is waterproof, except for this mascara. If you're going to go do something, you're, you know, if you're in high school and you're going to like a pool party and you want to have makeup on that's not going to move when you jump in the pool um, so you won't be self-conscious, you're going to have to use waterproof mascara. I hate waterproof mascara. But this is not the mascara for you if you need waterproof mascara. Anyway, we're just going to apply and pull and just do a little bit of this. We don't want any spider lashes. The whole idea of this tutorial is so you look as if you never had a birthmark and that you, they, you want, people are going to see that you have makeup on, but they're not going to see or know how much makeup you have on. Anytime I meet a new friend and then I, uh, they have the opportunity to see me take my makeup off in front of them, their mouth drops. They're like, oh my God, I had no idea that your birthmark was so you know, so big or so pigmented or so severe, they say, because they can't, you can't see it. And that's the point of this makeup tutorial. It's just so, you know, you can be left alone to be you when you're interacting with the world, when you don't need to explain yourself. So see, just a little bit. Now we're gonna go to the bottom and do the same. I look down. Some of you can look straight ahead because you have wonderful lashes. I literally have itty bitty non-existent lashes. If they had lash eyelash transplants, I would do it. Oh, that's another thing. I can't get lash, lash extensions. Um, if you're like me, I don't know if anybody else is like this out there who has a birthmark, but I can't get lash extensions because at the end of the night, this makeup takes a lot to take off and no lash extension will last through that process they would come right off. I have to use a cream cleanser, a makeup remover, and a foaming cleanser and washcloth to get this makeup off at night. Essentially my face gets washed two to three times and then it's off. And then I do all my different skincare routine on top of that. But yeah, no lash extensions for me. Poo. So there's that. Very light, very simple. Now the only thing on my face I feel right now that doesn't look natural is this. They still feel really pale. So um, if my eyebrows grew in a little darker or something, maybe I'd just put some gel on it and be done with it. But they are like my lashes. They don't exist. So one of the new products I have right now is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. It's great. I like it. It comes with a little pencil on this side. And it comes with this like ink pen on the other side. Now they have a bunch of colors. I just had my hair done recently with um, some highlights. So it added a little bit of red in my hair. So I wanted to make sure to get a brown that had a little bit of red and auburn pigmentation in it. Because if you get something that's n not, that's too dark or too ashy, it'll look weird and your face will end up looking dead and um, flat. Also, all your all the colors that you use on your face, whether it be base or eyeshadows or, or eyebrow, you need to find your color palette. So if you're ashy, you need to have the rest of the stuff kind of go with that um, color palette. Everything on my face is very warm, and so I couldn't pick anything ashy uh, for my eyebrows. So I want to even this out a little bit. So I'm going to do this. This is almost like a little tattoo pen. Right, okay, I'm gonna blend that later. I'm just 
still getting used to this product, but I do like it. It's a little sloppy on the applicator and maybe they could like resolve that by making it like a hard tip instead of a soft tip. But the color's right on and the product that it's a uh, liquid and a pencil, I think is fantastic because even though this looks crazy, This is a must have. You have to have these. Grab as many as you can when you're at Sephora. Q-tips and these, you need them. Now I'm gonna go back, take the pencil part and fill in the areas that need a little bit of attention and cleaning. I like to stick to the natural shape of my brow because I don't know, I, I just I want it to look natural. I don't I don't want to look like I have somebody else's eyebrows on. No matter what, every time I do my eyebrows, I get paranoid because they always feel like that episode from Seinfeld where one of George's friends gets the eyebrows drawn on him with a printed marker. I feel like that every single time. But it's never the case, and it just needs a little bit of blending. And a little bit of highlighting underneath. So for highlighting, I don't use my finger. I need a brush. I need something really tiny because your, your, your fingers are like blunt instruments. They're not precision instruments. A Little bit of a highlighter right here. And for me, I need this because I'm not somebody who is going to be able to In other words, adding the highlighter makes it look more dimensional. It looks more natural because we have so much foundation on. <laughs> Everything after the foundation is pretty much trying to look at, make it look like you don't have foundation on. <laughs> okay, and then I have a little spot up top. So if you can see, I have a little tiny spot up here that I wanna clean up. So I'm gonna take my foundation. One more time. I'm gonna find that little tiny brush of mine. Here we go. Just a little tiny paintbrush. Just a little tiny precision brush. Take that really light Revlon color stay. Dude, this Revlon is, this foundation is everything. When you apply an emollient on top of these layers and let you pretty much have cemented your face. You have this liquid base and then you put like a powdery base and then you put another powdery base. You've set your face with like cement. So when you put <clears throat> another emollient on top, you have the risk of spreading, spreading it, you know, almost like you took like a little bit of mineral oil and like had a dot where like this hole gets created and you could see the layers of makeup you just put on. So when you're doing an emollient reapply or a touch up, you have to be very gentle and let it dry. Otherwise you're gonna get cake or a hole. Okay, that's it. So me, I would leave the house just like this. Um, I also have 
a go-to just to make my lashes look a little bit bigger. Just an eyeliner. Any type of liquid liner will do. I really love Kat Von D's uh, tattoo liner. This is a much thicker one. For this, I'm just gonna follow my lash line, okay? I'm not gonna do anything fancy, no wings. And I'm only doing it on part of my eye. Now the fun thing about this, is we then take our Q-tip, get a tiny bit of that lotion. You wanna make sure this is as dry as possible or you're gonna move all the eye makeup you just did really dry and you're just gonna soften that line a little bit you're gonna spread it Now, last but not least, lip gloss. This is just the Sephora brand lip gloss. I think this is perfect nude. I do it mainly for moisture. I don't usually wear any color on my lips. I just want something very sheer that I can apply. And that's it. I hope that this was helpful. I hope it was entertaining. Um, if you have any questions about any of the products, uh, just DM me or uh, post in the comments below.